What's up guys, thanks for stopping by, I hope you're doing good. In today's video, we're gonna be talking all about Hearth and Home. There's a lot to get through in this update, so I've sorted through all the changes and selected all the big and most interesting features that are brand new with the update. So I'm gonna try and keep this brief so I can cover as much of the important stuff as possible in one video. So, what's new in Hearth and Home? Let's jump into it. Okay, so first off, we've got the black metal chest. This is pretty self-explanatory. It's a chest that requires black metal to make it, and it has way more slots than any other chest in the game. Inside the chest, however, we've got all of the new food. Now, before we jump into this, I just want to say that food has been completely overhauled, and I'm not going to be going into super detail about all of the food changes, because I will make a dedicated video for food in the near future. But I will briefly explain what's new. So first of all, we've got three categories of food. We've got stamina food. We've got neutral food, which gives you equal parts stamina and HP. And then we've got HP food. For new recipes, we've got onion soup, muck shake, ice cream, onions, wolf jerky, boar jerky, deer stew, wolf skewers, black soup, and minced meat sauce. Something else to note as well is that instead of wolves, deer, and boar all dropping the same meat, they now each have their own meat type. So we've now got cooked deer meat, cooked boar meat, and cooked wolf meat all as their own food options. Next up is hot tubs. Hot tubs raise your comfort level, but they do require wood to be activated and the chimney is actually functional. So if you're building inside, you will need to ventilate just like with a normal campfire. So you've probably noticed by this point that I've built my Viking a nice luxury spa using the new dark wood building pieces. These pieces include new dark wood beams, crystal walls, which one piece of crystal wall will actually also increase your comfort level dark wood dividers shutters and the new shingle roofs there's also the new dark wood gate the raven and the wolf head something else you may have noticed by now is that you can now also have blue standing iron torches there's also quite a bit of new furniture, including a new chair, a sitting log, a stone throne, and a couple of new tables, one really long one and one round table. Next up, we've got cauldron upgrades. So because of all the new food, some food items are only unlocked when you level up the cauldron. The first upgrade is the spice rack, the second is the butcher table, and the third is pots and pans. Some of the materials in the game that weren't previously stackable are now stackable. This includes fine wood, core wood, and coal, which is really useful for storage. Speaking of storage, you can now also create treasure chests and a couple of different variations of stacks of gold. This essentially works the same way as stacking wood or stone, but for specific amounts of treasure. Another addition is the new iron cooking station. This is now required to cook heavier cuts of meat, such as lox meat or serpent meat. The new stone oven is now required to bake lox pies and bread as both recipes are now uncooked when crafted. The stone oven does require fuel to work and it will also require a chimney. The cartography table is also a new addition for multiplayer. The way this works is that players can now add their personal map data to the cartography table. You add data to the cartography table by pressing E on the box sitting on the left side of the table. Then, when another player walks up to the cartography table, they click E to read the map and all data that was added to the box now appears on their map. This also adds another toggle to the player's map that allows them to show and hide map data added from the cartography table so you're able to tell it apart from your own personal map data. You can also now build iron cages with new wall and floor pieces. One of the best new additions to the game is the new tar pits. Tar pits spawn in planes and are infested with new enemies called growths. Growths act similar to blobs, but they actually spew tar out right in your character's face, which causes a lot of damage and tar also slows you down. Killing growths will give you a little bit of tar, but around the edge of the tar pit, you will be able to collect large blobs of tar, which give you a large amount of this new material. Tar is used for many of the new crafts in the game including all the new dark wood building pieces. The coolest aspect of tar pits though is that the tar balls can get stuck 
in the actual tar pit. And the way you actually retrieve these is by draining the tar pit itself. You can do this by digging a trench nearby and tunneling your way into the tar pit, allowing it to drain into the trench. As the tar seeps away, the larger blobs of tar that were previously stuck now become accessible. This is a great way to gather large quantities of tar, especially if you're planning on rebuilding your base with the new materials. One of the new weapons in the game is the new crystal battle axe. This actually requires crystal that you get from killing golems to be crafted. The crystal battle axe has a really cool move set and it actually deals spirit damage just like a silver weapon and it actually looks really cool in the dark because it does actually glow. The other new weapon is the silver knife. This one is pretty self-explanatory as it is literally just a silver knife, but it could be interesting to see how spirit damage affects stealth attacks on certain enemies and bosses. The bone tower shield is one of the new shields in the game that can actually be obtained really early because of the simple mats that it requires. And for an early game shield, it is actually really powerful. It also looks amazing and aesthetically, it's one of my favorite additions to the game. The other new shield is the iron buckler. This one also kind of explains itself as it just gives you an option for a decent buckler during the Iron Age, but it will be useful for players that like to parry. The way you obtain onions is particularly interesting. Onion seeds are found inside the ruined fortresses in mountains. You can then plant these seeds which grow into onions and as usual you can replant the onions to gain more seeds. The flowers for onion seeds are also one of the nicest looking cosmetic additions in the update. The butcher's knife is a really interesting addition. Basically, if you have friendly fire disabled, you will no longer be able to kill any tamed livestock. Instead, you either have to enable friendly fire or craft a butcher's knife, which will allow you to slaughter tamed animals with friendly fire disabled. The obliterator is another cool addition. Basically, it's a crafting station specifically designed for destroying items and occasionally turning them into coal. The animation looks really cool and it is crafted with a thunderstone, which is a new item item added to the trader so it adds additional value to the trader now for one of the best things in the whole update you can now craft a lox saddle if you use this saddle on a tamed lox you can now mount and ride loxes loxes have a huge amount of health and a huge amount of stamina and are basically complete tanks but one of the most interesting things about being able to ride loxes is that you are now able to fill your entire inventory with as much items as you want as you can ride loxes when you're encumbered this means that as long as you have access to a lox you can actually easily move large quantities of ores and ingots across huge pieces of land really easily not to mention that it's super fun to finally have a mount in Val Heim. All right, guys, that's just about going to do it for this one. I hope this video gave you an idea of what to expect with Hearth and Home. I know we're a little brief on all these topics, but I will be going a little deeper and focusing in on some specific topics in the future. So stay tuned for that. If you did like this video, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe if you haven't already, and leave a nice positive comment. I do stream live on Twitch and on this very YouTube channel. So I'll leave a link in the description to my Twitch channel if you're interested in that. If you want to support the content financially, then you can do so on Patreon at patreon.com slash nickrawcliffe and also by doing donations so i'll leave a link in the description to those as well i hope you enjoyed this video until next time have a good one